Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at CV from Grana. Now, uh, CV stands for Curriculum Vitae, which is a phrase basically describing uh, your entire life. A lot of people use it um, synonymously with uh, resume, but this one is basically supposed to be the, the resume of your entire life, and that's what you're doing in CV. You are building the facets of your life. Um, mechanically, though, <laughs> this game is essentially... Yahtzee mixed with sort of set collection card drafting. You are using dice that have different symbols on them, along with other tokens you may gain during the course of the game, to purchase cards from a lineup that are going to represent these different aspects of your life. Getting married, having kids, getting a job, having a career. All of these different aspects, all the way up from uh, going from childhood all the way to old age. There's a little more to it than that, so let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played. Then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. I like cheese sandwiches. I like toast and bread. CV is a game all about building a life from beginning to end. Or end to the beginning, with the Benjamin Button expansion. Mechanically speaking, the goal is to have the most points at the end of the game. The end of the game is triggered when the old age deck has fewer cards left in it than the number of players. You immediately stop, count up points, and determine who is the winner. Some cards just give you points, but most of your points will be from your goal cards, which I'll explain in a moment, and a chart on the board, which will dictate how many points you get for health, knowledge, and relationship cards that you've accumulated. For instance, if I had four health cards, I would get ten points, plus whatever I get for the other two categories. Up front, I will tell you that the main mechanism of CV is Yahtzee-style dice rolling, because Yahtzee is front-loaded into every human's life whether you like it or not. I'll break this down in more detail later, but you roll the dice up to three times, hoping to get the symbols you need to buy cards and avoiding bad luck symbols. To set up the game, separate the five different decks of cards. Three of those decks represent the main stages of life. Horrifyingly awkward adolescence, soul-crushing middle age, and grim, inevitable old age. Wait, why do you want to play a game about living a human lifespan again? Huh. After shuffling these decks and placing them in their spots on the board, fill up the track below it with adolescence cards. Let's talk about these cards for a moment, or 70. In these three decks are six types of cards you'll be purchasing throughout the game. Thematically, each card is a facet of someone's life. Each card has a cost right below its name in symbols. You must use the dice and any symbol tokens you've acquired from other cards to purchase these cards. They will give you special effects like those tokens that will help you out, as well as contribute to your goals and therefore give you points at the end of the game. Orange Health, Green Knowledge, and Purple Relationship cards function similarly and give you the appropriate symbols and other effects for later use. Blue Work cards give you money, but usually cause you stress and require great sacrifice. Not at all like real life work, which is usually pleasant and stress free. Yellow Possession cards are straight up points that you buy with straight up cheddar yo. Gray event cards are single use. You buy them, you put them face down in front of you, and you wait to use them and then discard them immediately later. Back to the setup. Shuffle the goal cards and deal one out to each player face down, and several more face up to the upper track, dependent on the number of players. In real life, setting goals for yourself is pointless, futile, utterly unfulfilling, and I do not recommend it at all. But in the game CV, they give you points, so that's something. At the end of the game, you'll reveal your personal goal and get points based on the type of cards you were able to purchase during the course of the game. The public goals, however, are up for grabs. One by one at the end of the game, you'll check which player best fulfilled each goal by earning the most potential points from it. Then, they'll get those points if they have the most. Friendly ties, yo! Believe it or not, some people actually have childhoods they want to remember. I know, right? Shuffle up these cards and deal three out to each player. You'll then draft them such that you will end up with three at the end. One player will end up with the bicycle and reveal it immediately. It's worth a point and they are the start player. All the other cards are actually events. Hold them and use them for later for free symbols or rerolls, just like the events you'll purchase during the rest of the game. Starting with the spoiled rich kid who had a bike when she was little, you take your turns. Each turn has five phases, all of which you'll complete before moving on to the next player. 
First, you roll four dice, plus whatever dice you gain from using events and tokens. You can then re-roll any of the dice you want up to two more times. But, if dice come up with the bad luck face, they are frozen, and they cannot be re-rolled, and even worse things are going to happen, we'll get to in a second. Second, you use the dice symbols and whatever tokens you've gained from previous purchases or events that you've played to buy up to two cards from the track. Symbols of any type can be used only once per round. Take the cards you've purchased from the track, but don't fill it up yet. Three good luck symbols allow you to take any card you like regardless of symbols, unless it has a special condition aside from symbols, which you'll still have to meet. Some cards require a sacrifice, which is a red slash through one of the symbols. You must pay this cost every round, or the card is discarded. Babies cost money, or they get dumped behind the McDonald's. Third, count up your bad luck. Every three bad luck symbols you are forced to keep require you to ditch one of your active cards. What's an active card? I'm so glad you asked. Fourth, add the cards you purchased to your CV. This is the collection of cards you're building in front of yourself during the course of the game. All cards of a type get their own pile in front of you. You splay them out in a column so that one card is visible on top and you only see the names of the rest. Cards on top are active and they are the only cards in the stack that actually give you their special effect. For health, relationship, and knowledge cards, you have your choice of placing a new card right on top, and therefore active, or placing it anywhere else in the stack. Some cards are by color, because, you know, gender fluidity and all, no judgment here. When you buy it, you choose which color stack it will belong to. Possession and work cards must go on top of their stacks, replacing the last active card. Events go into your hand for later use. Finally, number five, you clean up. Cards slide left to fill up gaps, and new cards are placed at the end of the line. You fill from the appropriate deck, starting with horribly awkward adolescence. You get the idea. At the end of the whole round, after the last player's turn, the leftmost card is trashed before you refill the lineup. Also, social assistance is a thing, because this game is about realism and Yahtzee. If one or more players has at least twice as many cards as any other player or players... Those downtrodden players get to take a free card from the lineup. This goes on and on until the old age deck runs out. Then, just like I described at the beginning of this overly long overview, you count up your points like I described, and whoever has the most points is the winner. That is CV. Now get the hell off my lawn. Okay, I was being very snarky during my overview, but I hope that you don't mistake that for me being uh, hypercritical of the game, because the truth of the matter is, I like CV quite a bit. Um, I think that it's a very interesting theme, although the theme is very pasted on once you actually play the game. Nevertheless, the idea of it, of actually um, getting these different facets of your life and putting them together, is fun. And when you actually get into it and enjoy the game... It's fun to think about, oh, I'm a marathon runner, and I'm also a CEO of a company, and I'm, you know, I've got twins, and all this different type of stuff. It's just fun, and the game is helped along a lot by the artwork. The artwork in this game is really, really good. Uh, the only problem I have with it is that the women look very odd. I almost borderline sexist in a way. I'm not really sure. I don't know if it was just his uh, the artist's style, or that's... Yeah, I was trying to say something, but the men look kind of normal and the women look extremely bizarre. But other than that, it's very high quality. The graphic design is very neat and clean. Everything is very simple. The rules are, are fine. Uh, the game is just very, very straightforward. Now, even in praising CV and the things that I like about it, I have to acknowledge the faults of it. We'll just get, go ahead and get those out of the way. And there are things that I think I can overlook overall. But a lot of people in my group had a serious problem with them. And perhaps if I was on more of the receiving end of these issues, I would have a more serious problem. First and foremost is the randomness. This is a uh, Yahtzee-style dice roller, which means that you're just going to have bad luck sometimes. But even more than, say, let's say King of Tokyo. We're in King of Tokyo... You may not get what you want, but unless you're talking about the, the original King of Tokyo where you've got the, the numbers and points, rarely are you, like, totally screwed. You do something. You might hit people. You might get some energy. You might heal a little bit. Whatever. In CV, it is entirely possible <laughs> to roll a bunch of bad luck. And I've seen it happen. Even if you just roll mostly bad luck, you're really screwed. You may not get the card that you want that round, or any card, 
and you may have to kill one of the cards that you already have. It is very possible for luck to just compound in this game and just make life incredibly miserable for you, uh, which, granted, might be life. Maybe that's a bit of the theme that I think probably unintentionally is being brought out in that regard. Uh, But I think because of the speed of the game, because of the simplicity of the game, because it's not like an over... like brain taxing game that's like got like tons of like uh definitive things that you have to do and that takes two or three hours because it can be played in an hour maybe a little bit less it felt like the randomness wasn't that huge of a thing and there are of course there's ways to mitigate it you focus on getting cards that give you more symbols all the time tokens that you can use um to sort of mitigate that in the future to guarantee that you're always getting at least something Nevertheless, I have seen a lot of very wide gaps and points in this game. It's just the way that it goes. I think, again, that the, the, the positives of the game sort of outweigh that. Um, I like the components. Everything looks pretty nice. Um, I do think that there, it can feel a little bit samey when you play it a few times because, again, that theme is not so integrated into the gameplay that it feels like this fresh, visceral experience each time. It's just like, okay, uh, this is what I got this time as far as goal cards. This is what I have this time as far as my childhood cards. I'm just going to focus on doing this. And it's just symbols, 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 colors, colors, colors. Um, I like that they threw in things like the um, the restrictions and the uh, the multicolored cards. That adds another dynamic to the game. I would have liked to have seen more of that. And of course, there is an expansion that came out with the game. And there may be more in the horizon. And that's, that was what their plan was. But the base game does feel a little bit sparse in that regard especially if you went into this expecting something a little bit deeper this is a super light game um in the complexity scale it's probably actually equal with king of tokyo when i think about it um it's that light but i again i think that that is to its advantage um i am a fan of that kind of dice rolling mechanism um the whole thing with the bad luck and the good luck while it can be devastating it's also a very interesting idea and how you decide to go about getting your cards and go for, do you want to go for as many of the, the general cards to get those points as much as possible, go for the community goals. You do have some leeway there as to how you want to play in your strategy. But again, this is not like total, like hundreds of branching strategy paths. It's just not that kind of game. So I think that for what it is, it's a fun game. Uh, I like it. I'm going to keep it. Uh, the art style does a lot to <laughs> massage over any bad parts about the game it's totally not going to be for everybody. Um, it, it When you first hear about it, when you first look at it, you're like, oh, it's got some Euro game elements. But it's much more just a random dice chucker than you might suspect. But its charm sort of elevates it above that level, enough for me anyways, but not necessarily for everybody else. That is CV from Grana. I do recommend it. Hesitantly. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.